This is a mid 1960s RCA CTC 16 color roundy set. A friend of mine bought this solely for the CRT. His daily driver needs a new CRT. He picked this up in hopes of finding a good CRT. He says he tested it and uh, it's strong. So in this video, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the CRT, do the cataract. I've done several videos on this. Why not another one? It's supposed to be a good hot weekend. So it's a little bit different here. We have a remote set, remote control. And then what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to resurrect the set. Now this one is in extremely bad condition. extremely look at the coils busted off and missing this coil looks like it's busted this thing is in extremely bad condition he was gonna throw it away he was gonna yank the CRT and throw the cabinet and chassis away I said let me resurrect it let me do a resurrection video on it so he pulled all the tubes. Also the flyback, look at this. Also the flyback, he said, was bad in the set. So he took it out and he covered it with uh, Permatex Ultra Gray. So we'll try this. If not, I got other flybacks we can put in here to resurrect it. But first we're going to check the CRT. Then we're going to yank the CRT and uh, do the cataract and then in the second part I'll probably put his CRT out of his daily watcher back in here and then we'll resurrect the chassis. I would really like to resurrect this and fire it up for the debates but something tells me something in the back of my head uh, tells me that we will not see a Trump Biden debate. Let's see, set G1, that should be at 50 volts. And let's see, cut off. Now he said this is strong. Um, I'm used to this CRT tester, so I know what a strong tube looks like. A strong tube will be well up in the green. And this thing, this thing is not a strong tube. I don't know what he was talking about. Well, it's coming up, and the good thing is they're even. So it's a decent tube. It's actually approaching good. It's just been... Yeah, they're coming up. Look at that, and they're all even. That's, that's good. That's good. It's a good tube. So yeah, this is on cutoff. So I need to bring the cutoff down to the first line on all of these. So there we go. Test. So this is a pretty good roundy. See how they're all in the green? That's what we're looking for. Yeah, I'm looking at this, and I I don't even know if this is going to be resurrectable. This is in such bad shape. I mean, what happened to this thing? might actually be like a candidate for the pressure washer this is the remote chassis right here it's all remote this thing is in really really bad shape this would be one long video to resurrect this guy whenever working on one of these RCA sets and removing the chassis See how the rivet broke off the speaker there? That always happens every single time on all these RCAs. It's easy once you get it out, you just drill it out and put a screw through it, but be very careful. 
And unfortunately, this speaker didn't make it. Eh, that might be fixable. Oh my, so this had a really juicy rat's nest in it. And people, people say, people comment, why do you wear gloves? What's wrong? Why do you wear gloves? Well, maybe this is why I wear gloves right here. Besides the cadmium and the lead and everything else. Let's see, can we get a... Ooh, high performance luxury sports sedan. Can we get a date on this? Fiat X. Ooh, come to flavor country. So we got reading material in here. So rats will destroy anything. They'll really destroy a car. Get in there and eat all the wiring and hoses up. So if this is just rat urine and feces, we can probably uh, steam clean or pressure wash this. But man, this is in really, really bad shape. Efficiency coil. Let me turn it over. This is right here. That's the remote receiver. This chassis. These are electric motors. They actually rotate the, the, the adjustments. In brilliant 4K. Look at that. This is that 15 ohm resistor that gets hot and burns out all the time. That looks nice and baked. Lots of pet dander and look at that. Spider webs. But what's good is it all looks like it's there except the corrosion. The corrosion is something that really makes these resurrections difficult because, and I don't know if that's urine or what that is. It's corroded everything so bad. This here, well, this part right here was exposed. The chassis covers most of the rest of this. But this is like, is that like a buildup of urine? Is that what that is? Because that's what's all over the chassis. And I almost wonder if this thing was used in like a kitchen or something. And that's grease. Yes, I just enjoyed a sniff of this. And it is definitely... A buildup of rat urine, rat or mouse urine and feces. It's like a encrusted kind of glaze thing going on. So you might be thinking, oh, that's gross. But actually, uh, excrement is good because it it's water soluble. I can just take this whole chassis down to the coin op car wash and just spray it off for a couple bucks. Where if this was grease or something, it would not come off. So anyway, uh, I think what we're going to do in this video, we're going to pull the CRT and decataract it. And uh, in the next part, we'll put his CRT, which is a little weaker, back in this. And then we'll work on the chassis. This spring is something that the got eaten up and failed which is could go easily overlooked but it's sort of important what it does is it goes from here across the back of the CRT over to this side and its sole purpose is to provide a ground onto the outside of the dag here so without that spring there you'll get all kinds of weird issues that spring needs to be there can easily be left out or overlooked Oh my, the odor of this baking in the sun is a true international flavor sensation. Wow. 
it smells even more incredible coming out of the vacuum cleaner. Wish I could share this experience. For good measure, and just to make it easier putting it back together, let's take and just mark everything in a line here. If I can get this to work. Just put, we'll just put little yellow dots kind of on everything here. I know the lighting is not the best. Come on. I don't want it on the CRT. Okay, we'll just put it there, then we'll put it here. And I know this is not really necessary, it's just because we're not putting the same CRT back, but just for educational sake, like let's say you were going to take your CRT out and do the cataract and then put it back. It would just make it easier and faster just to mark everything and then boom, put it all back without having to think about what goes where. We have more pack rat items down here. Okay, this was folded up. This was folded up down here. This is supposed to be laying right here and the chassis sits on top of this and it provides a ground to the uh, metal front so with this folded up down in here the way it was not connected to the chassis and that spring being gone surprised this thing didn't shock the hell out of somebody Ooh, what do we have here? A couple capacitors, a safety capacitor, and a couple resistors. Nastiness. Okay, we're out. This might actually be recoverable. See, these always break right here like this. If you've ever worked on an RCA set from this era, you've experienced this failure. And it's easy enough to fix it. You just drive it out and put a little nut and bolt there. Um, clean that all up. Here's our CRT. We'll go after this tomorrow. I just got it upside down in a metal trash can. It's hard to see, but it's just in a metal trash can. I was trying to find a name or a rebuilder on this, but it seems to be a no-name brand. Yeah, there it is. Now I just got to try and solder onto the lead coming out of the speaker. I should probably check it to see if it's open or not. I believe we have success here. You can see my repair. And what I did is I just uses, used a piece of test lead wire to extend the speaker there uh, the, where it broke off. Let's see here. So we have a good speaker. So this is how you fix these RCA speakers when they break. I was digging through my stash of flybacks just in case the one that he tried to silicone uh, doesn't work. And here's a minty fresh new old stock Fly 278 which is the appropriate Thord Arson replacement for the CTC 16 series. I also have a bunch of these which are from CTC 15s and they're a little bit different. They use, uh, the windings are a little bit different and they use a focus rectifier, solid state focus rectifier rather than the uh, focus rectifier tube. On the CTC 16, uh, that right there 
is where the focus rectifier tube goes. And because of the way he removed the flyback, uh, not expecting to keep the chassis, we might want to try and substitute in one of the 15s and just totally get rid of that whole focus rectifier tube. It's also kind of mysterious. Why did RCA use a solid state rectifier in the 15 and then after the 15 they went back to using a tube focus rectifier? I don't know. The mystery. Maybe there were too many problems with the selenium stick diode. Anyway, this will be for the next video. Okay, the first thing we got to do is get this tape off of here. Uh, we want to clean this off all the way around. So I'll do that. See this right here? That's the fill port. When they're bonding the safety lens, that's how they filled it up right there. Now, every time I do one of these videos, I always get comments suggesting a thousand dis different solvents. I don't want to use solvents. I don't want to play or guess what solvent will dissolve this stuff. We know what works. It's heat on this type. Now, the Zenith greenish one is different. You have to use a hot wire, the Sunshine CRT, but for the RCA style, heat works well. We're going to use heat. So next thing we need to do is, uh, with Windex, clean this, clean the front of this very well. Cleanliness, when it comes to doing cataract, cleanliness is super important. It is much easier to scrub this and get it clean when it's bonded than try and do it once you have it off. I put a black trash bag over this because... Black tends to attract heat or trap heat or not reflect as much heat as something that's white. And it also keeps any dirt off the glass we just cleaned. So I'm going to let this sit in the sun probably until 1 in the afternoon until high, high heat. And it's hot today. So the sun will get, get the majority of the work done for us here. Or it'll get us pretty, pretty close. Hundred and eighty six degrees, hundred and eighty five degrees. It's good and hot. We got to get it a lot hotter though in the middle. So I've got a thick sweatshirt. I'm gonna use a head scarf to wrap my head, and I'm gonna wear these thick gloves and glasses. And I got chopsticks and a razor blade. This is going to be really hot for a few minutes, so I've got to just get in there and get it done and not pass out in this heat. It is absolutely my divine wish to be sprayed with 300 degree glass from a imploding CRT. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to... Boy, this one's really close. Try and drive these chopsticks in here. And what they'll do is they put a little pressure pushing up on it. Out. You can see it's starting to separate there. Just okay, here we go.
see the uh, fingers? Right here. There she goes. Two hundred degrees. Two hundred twenty-five degrees, and there she goes. Well, I should be off. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. Okay. Nothing but the best. Now the next step is just to clean this all off. Now the next step is cleaning, so we need to let this completely cool down to a point where it's safe to spray it with Windex. Now the next step is to clean the inside of the safety lens and the CRT, and this is critical. These have got to be spotless. This is special double stick tape that I got from Hawkeye right when he closed. I'm putting four pieces of it around the CRT just to hold the safety glass in and then we'll silicone it. Then you sit the safety glass down when you're sure it's all clean and now we're gonna run a bead of silicone inside just inside the lip here. This is just white silicone one it's not critical. This is easier done with two hands, but just for demonstration purposes. You can't see this. The uh, bezel that the CRT fits into covers well over this area. So you can use any color you want here. I'm going to use two hands. This came out pretty well. I had to do it twice because it was still too hot and the double stick tape is getting old and it slipped and the whole safety glass slipped off to one side but what I did is I took me two hours to clean the silicone that I had on it off then I redid the tape and I put some silicone behind the tape and I did it all again I got a couple little stringers here that I'll clean when it dries but looks pretty good Definitely looks better than when we started. I dropped off the good CRT out of this set that we did the cataract on and I picked up the CRT we're going to be putting in this set. And this is a Sylvania and this is the other style bonding agent that I talked about. So this is the greenish 
what I referred to as the Zenith Sunshine CRT. This is the one you have to cut off with a hot wire. And this doesn't, this doesn't fail like the RCA. This turns into like an oily goo, but this one's okay. The CRT is supposed to be very weak, but it'll be good enough for this resurrection. The Sylvania CRT is in, as well as the speaker. And what I'm going to do while I hunt around for a spring wire ground assembly for the DAG, I'm going to, we're going to compare this to the one we took out. So I'm going to let it warm up for a while. I'm usually pretty good about keeping the CRT grounding springs and stuff from sets I EOL. I got our spring here and this is not quite ideal but remember this is just a resurrection it's, it should go from over here and then the spring should be more in the middle but what this is is this is a conductive paint on the outside of this that forms a capacitor or glass capacitor using the CRT between the paint on the inside and the paint on the outside this conductive paint so we just want to make sure that this is pulled up against here to ground this so anyway, if you didn't know what that was, you need a you need something here to ground it. And the newer sets have all the way around. So this is really crappy. Okay, let's see how our CRT is doing here. It's been warming up for a while. So set cut off. This CRT is, wow, the blue and red are actually, blue and red are strong. The green is decent. I don't know what he was talking about, why this thing was so weak. This thing was is stronger than the previous CRT on a couple of the guns. I don't know, watch the beginning of the video. Anyway, that's part one. Uh, in part two, which will be coming in, I don't know, a month or a couple weeks or something, we'll do the high voltage on the chassis. We'll get that working, the flyback, horizontal oscillator, damper, horizontal output, we'll get that working. This will produce a decent picture. I'm not going to rejuvenate it or anything, I'm just going to leave it.